This lesson is on formatting a newsletter using Microsoft Word. What we're going to do is we're going to download a few different files, work with these files to create a newsletter. So here's the goal here is I have this PowerPoint, which I've turned to a PDF, and you can download this. And what it has inside is it has step-by-step -step instructions on creating this. And we're going to go through this PowerPoint together here. So feel free to skip ahead on things you know, uh, bounce around, come back. I'm going to do it in little chunks of video-wise, so that way you don't have to go through all of them if you know everything in it. This should probably take a better part of an hour, actually, to get through this entire item. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download the PDF, which I have here, and then these. Now, this is a zip file. I'm going to download this file. Now, a way I like to download files is I'll usually use right-click, save link as. If you click it, it might work, but I don't always know where it's going to go but I'll just click it this time. So it's gonna go somewhere. And I'm gonna do open. Now, the, what a zip file is, it's a bunch of little files that are zipped together. Think of it like a coat, you know, it's just all bundled together. And what we need to do is we need to get them out of here. We, need, we can't just click them from here and open them because what'll happen is it creates like a temporary file and you do all your work and you close it and you won't find that temporary file. It'll be somewhere deep in a hidden folder inside your computer. So our first step is to extract them all. So I'm gonna come up here and say extract all. And where do I wanna put it? Downloads, no, I think I'm gonna put this on my desktop so I can find it. So let's go to and find the desktop. And I'm just gonna call this newsletter. Select and hit new. Oop, new folder. There's a mistake. Let's do that. Let's, do, let's go in here. Okay, I'm going to get this out of here now. It probably will work, but I like doing it a little better this way. Okay, so here we are in the newsletter folder on my desktop. I took out the wording in here, selecting this folder. There's where it's going to go. Good. Show me the files when it's complete. Okay. Extract. So make sure you are where you think you are, that you're not over in that other one still, the zip file. That's this one. I don't want that. I'm going to close that. This is where I want to work then. In here, then, you should have a couple of pictures and a document. And that's about it for the first part for the zip file. Let's go ahead and open up the document. And I'm going to situate this on one side. And let's put the PDF on the other side. And let's move on to our next step. So we have this starting document here. First thing I need to do, let's hit enable edit. Can't do anything until we can edit it. Okay, fill the screen, I'm gonna put it back to the side again. So our next step is I wanna give it a new name so I don't mess up and submit the wrong one. So when we're done, we're gonna have a new document. This document is still gonna be hanging around, so don't submit this one. We're going to submit the one with your name on it. So we're going to go File, Save As, and put James Palmer on there. So when we're done, make sure you submit the one that has your name on it. Okay. So the thing I want to do first is I like to, when I'm working in a large letter like this, I want to work with the big stuff first and then go down to the smaller stuff. So if I'm going to do page changes, I'm going to do all that first, and then maybe I'll come back and then do the font, and then I'll work on the paragraph and so forth, the things that affect everything, and then come down slower and slower and get the smaller things. So the first thing I want to do is the margins, because that's going to affect every page. So let's come up here, and we're going to find it under Layout, Margins, and let's just change this one to Narrow on all sides. Now I could pick other ones. If I didn't like though any of them, I could go into custom and set them. So there we go for narrow. Now the next thing I want to do is we're going to change one of the paragraphs. So let's highlight just one of them. I'll just grab this one here. Now there's a couple ways you can grab paragraphs. One, I could come out here, click, hold, and drag from the border down. I can come inside and highlight all of it. Or one of my favorites, triple click. And that gets, should get, oopsie, I would, that's more than one paragraph. So there we go. Triple click gets you a paragraph. Okay, so let's do this change. We're going to go to 12 point 
Cambria font and justify the text. Just this one. So home, 12 point check, Cambria, that's Calibri. Okay, let's keep coming down. Now, if you don't have Cambria, you can pick something that looks something like it. Cambria and justify, that's up here under paragraph style. Justify is when the left and the right margins line up. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is I wanna change the style on this one. Right now it's set to normal style and I'm gonna maximize this so we can see the whole menu. So normal style, see how it's lit up here underneath home ribbon? That means all the stuff is normal. What styles are used for is that I can set one of them say this is what I want my heading to look like. Then anytime I come up and click on it, it makes all those headings look the same. So that way you have sort of a uniform look. The cool thing though also is that when you change something, you can edit the style and everywhere you use that style, it will change as well. So right now I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to right click on here, right click, update normal to match selection. So now just you look through and you'll see that everywhere that the normal style, which was the base, has been used, it now has a aligned right and left. It is justified all the way across. Let's put this back over. So again, I right clicked on it after I made the changes and said update normal to match the selection. Okay, one more thing here for our first video. Let's do the columns. So click in front of the word red bluff. That's right there. Click in front, there we are. And let's go to the column menu. So we can go find that under layout, columns, choose page layout, and let's go all the way down here to more columns. The reason I didn't just click one of those is I really want to control what becomes multiple columns, not the entire thing. I want just everything from Red Bluff on to become a different column. So to do that, I'm saying I'm going to come down here and I'll say, okay, I want three columns. I want to make them 2.3 width. That spacing's fine. If it wasn't, or if you wanted different column widths, you unclick this and then you can change them. But here's the thing, I don't want the whole document. I want this point forward from Red Bluff onto the bottom to be three columns at 2.3. There. Now you may not have these little backward P things of paragraphs. You may not see this thing here. What's going on is I have this checked. I like working in this mode for this, is that it's called the show hide button, show hide your formatting. And what it does is it goes through and shows you the spaces, that's the dots. It shows you the hard returns at the end of each paragraph and so forth. Like that one, I may not have known that was a new paragraph there by looking at it. But now with that, now I can turn that on and off here. These don't print, they're non-printing characters. So don't worry about that afterwards. But if they bug you, just turn it off. I liked it because I can see, okay, there's my section break. Okay, that's it for our first video. In a moment then, we'll dive into the next part and start working with the paragraph spacing. See you there.